No, because Andy just wanted me to hold still. I couldn't, of course. And uh, that's about, I don't know how these things come about. You know, the sheer, well, the sheer chance, like WQXR. Um, I don't know. I have done nothing to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. But my ass is quite beautiful, or was. Mm. <laughs> Bravo. There was a little detail. <clears throat> you, for a moment, you held a little card with the number four on it. A little detail with the number four? What, what does that signify? Well, that's the title of Yoko Ono's uh, Fluxus film, number four, which is also called The Bottom Scene. Oh, well, uh, with Yoko Ono, the, I suppose the Yoko Ono's number four was one of her movies. Actually, I made a film with uh, Yoko and John Lennon. Um, it was called Up Your Legs Forever. And I came out of the dressing room totally naked. <laughs> but it meant, they meant just, they were just toying with nudity. They just meant up your legs to a certain height, you know, I wasn't having any of that. <laughs> and I think I turned them on to total nudity right there. They laughed. This film is dated in 1964. Is that right? I guess so. What do you remember it as? Do you remember what year it was? Uh, it, was it was a horrible and great year. I won an OB for some other thing. Okay. For a Frank O'Hara play, and that was uh, political. Anyway, I won't go into that. that. I went to Europe for three years rather than kill Leroy Jones, Andy, or myself. Why did you want to kill Leroy Jones? Because we he was doing a play with the the general, and he he. Uh, I was a white preacher in a boat with a black congregation, and he decided he wasn't selling, he was selling separatism that year. And he wouldn't tell us that, he wouldn't tell Frank or Aaron anything, but he uh, told us he'd go sign up for the new theater, we had a temporary theater. He'd sign up for the new theater tomorrow. He was lying. And rather than kill him and myself and Andy, who was making stupor, Andy would tell you anything you wanted to hear. And rather than kill him, I went to Europe for three years and made a bunch of movies over there, too. <laughs> what did you do over there? What movies did you do? Well, I had strapped to my back. Uh, a film I made previous, uh, The Queen of Sheba Meets the Adam Man, mm -hmm. with Ron Rice, Great. which is where Andy got a lot of his inspiration. And I traveled around Europe showing it to uh, uh, a lot of superstars, De Sica and Antonioni and everybody. I was very famous for two weeks in Europe. <laughs> Robbie wrote about me. Everything, uh, anyway, was bullshit. Ultimately. Why did you just? When did you decide to come back? I mean, was it? And it was in Paris. We were in Paris, and they showed. Uh, oh. Chelsea Girls. Chelsea Girls. Thank you. They showed Chelsea Girls, and I was there with Jean Jacques LaBelle, who was sort of the lead. Uh, leading the young uh, European uh, avant-garde people. And they walked out on Chelsea Girls. And I said, these people, what am I doing in Paris in La Dolce Vita Land? And these people don't know what's happening in America. And actually, France was inspiring us with Jean-Luc Godard and everybody. But we were going way beyond that. And I realized that. And then Andy said, oh, Taylor, we have a lot of good roles for you. Come back. And then Mickey Ruskin, who had uh, 
Max is Kansas City. He said, Taylor, I've got the perfect restaurant for you. Please come home. And that did it. <laughs> Andy didn't do it. Uh, Mickey Ruskin did. So I w took the next boat out on the plane and came back. And uh, I, the day I got off the plane, we made uh, some Andy Warhol film. And I guess I forgave him. Sort of. Watch out for geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't uh, Dennis Hopper co-star with you in Tarzan? Dennis Hopper, I handed... Uh, Dennis was my stand-in, and I was Tarzan. And when Andy wanted me to climb a tree, and he put, Andy was in the film. The only time he was in the film. And, and Andy showed me the script where I was supposed to climb a tree to get a coconut or a banana or something. And uh, I took the script from Andy and tore it up and threw it in his face. And then I paid Dennis Hopper to climb a fucking tree and get me a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time Dennis really relaxed, I think, inspired him. <laughs> Was Andy handing you the objects? Was he choosing the objects in the movie just now? Did he what? Was Andy choosing the objects for you to put between your legs in the movie? Was no. He... You don't tell Taylor and me what you do. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I missed the Bible. I put the, maybe they censored that. I don't know. Because uh, I shoved a Bible up there at one point. But it was all my doing. I insisted Andy didn't want me to do anything. <laughs> Boring. Was Andy on the camera? Andy was on the on the camera. Yeah, Paul wasn't. Uh, he wasn't with Andy at the time. <clears throat> and you were in a happening with uh, Jean Jacques Rebel in Paris. The, the I was. I uh, did a Picasso play in Saint Tropez. Oh, okay. The Jean-Jacques uh, Finance. Oh, I see. I didn't realize his father was one of the richest people in America and France. Yeah, he was a big collector. Yeah. yeah. I haven't heard from Jean-Jacques since he inherited $400 million. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my God. I'm amazed how many people stayed. <laughs> Well, the, the reading in Paris, uh, uh, I'm sure that they never heard anything quite like that, you know, from uh, yeah, they were, they, a famous, uh, famous poet, you know. They couldn't believe we were for real. Chelsea Girls was for real. The, there was no acting. We didn't act with Andy. Mm -hmm. We just, just did it. Taylor, do, do you know if uh, the Bowery Poetry Project, is there a chance the that it's Bowery going to be Bowery Poetry, I read or? there for six or seven years, every, every uh, weekend. And uh, then he, they, he turned it into a fancy restaurant, I guess. I haven't been by to see. It's supposed to open in January. Has anybody else made you offers to uh, continue your weekly appearance? Uh, no, I, actually, I'm recovering from my Harvard deb debacle, debacle. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, you know, they were supposed to pick up all my stuff uh, last July. And so I, I was stiff. Someone said, Taylor, they stiffed you. So fuck Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> fuck them. Yeah. They couldn't, you know, Allen Ginsberg, who plagiarized my poem, if it had been, he, if it'd been him, they wouldn't have dared to uh, do anything. Uh, maybe. He got in trouble, too. He got in trouble. He and Ferlin Getty got in a lot of trouble, went to court a couple of times to protect our freedom of speech. So God bless them both. Does anybody have any other questions? Anybody? Thank you immensely. You've been a great, great, great party.